All right, sit back and let me tell you about when 150 inmates turned against me and ran me out of a dorm in the county jail. <laughs> you know, this going to be interesting. I... tell you about how 150, you know, inmates, I'm not going to call them convicts, how 150 inmates ran me out of the dorm, you know? Now, I get to this dorm, and the way the dorm is set up, so you understand, I got I, I to gotta ride and let you know what I'm talking about. The way the dorm is set up, it's like, you know, of course, you got a wall over here with um, bars and windows and a wall, ro wall over here with bars and windows. Now, you got beds along those walls. In the middle of the floor, it has a three-foot wall. On the back of that three-foot wall, it had beds on each side, you know? So it's four sets of beds, you know, and a wall in the middle of the four sets. So now... When I come in, you got like these five dudes from the town. You know, I'm out of town. You got these five dudes from the town. And it's crazy because, you know, they've been there for a minute. They know everybody. They're supposed to be the tough guys. You know, they're running all five phones. So nobody can get to the phone because they're always on it. People, even when as far as asking them if they could use it, you know. They all on one side. They bring me up into this dorm, and all the way in the in, the, in 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 the front of the dorm, which is like behind me, there's a TV back there. So everybody wants a a, a bunk by the TV so you can lay in the bed at night and watch a movie and chill with your you know and do what you got to do, you know. And on the right side, it was the second bunk from the TV was open. There was nobody in it. They let me in the prison, in the uh, in the county jail, and they assigned me to that bed. When I get to that bed, the the brothers there is telling me, "Oh, you don't want to take that bed because Debo, you know, went to the hole, and when he come back, you know, he's gonna want his bed back, or it's gonna be a problem." I said, "Okay, well, I deal with Debo when he gets out the hole," and they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, "I ain't no problem." So now. Out the five dudes that's over there, everybody gravitated to them. But once I got in the unit, I had a, two dudes that gravitated towards me, you know. One of them was built like, you know, have you ever seen the old Godzilla movie? Remember Godzilla's baby was all thick with no neck and all that? That's what he looked like. So we called him Godzuki, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's a little Tyrannosaurus Rex looking dude. You know, so, and it was another dude that was light skinned and, you know, had waves and was slim and, you know, but those two gravitated towards me. So they moved from the left side to the right side to where I'm at. So when they moved over there to where I'm at, everything is cool. We watching TV, we chilling. So now I need to use the phone. So I get up and there was a phone open. So I picked the phone up, used the phone. And right after I get on the phone, I realized that, you know, there's a dude standing up looking all what he considered as mean. So I put my back to the wall, cock one leg up on the wall, and I'm talking on the phone. I'm looking at him, and he's looking at his watch, and, you know, it's 15-minute calls, so he's timing it. So my 15 minutes is up, and I hang the phone up. As soon as I hang the phone up, he reaches over, and he picks up the phone. Uh... He looks at me. So I tell him, you know, what's up? He said, nah, you know, that's my phone. I said, oh, okay. And I dialed another number. I was finished, but I dialed another number, you know. And I'm talking to somebody else. 
So he start pacing back and forth. And my 15 minutes up again, and he comes up again and say, yo, I'm waiting on the phone. I said, okay, well, you're going to keep waiting, you know? And he turns around, and he go back, he puts his sneakers on, and he ties them up real tight, you know? So I'm sitting there, and got one leg cocked up on the wall, so I tie each leg up one at a time real tight myself, you know, because now I'm ready for whatever. Wherever he trying to take this, that's where we going to go with this. So I used the phone for about five more clicks. I stayed there about an hour and a half. And I go back and I sit down on my bed and I'm waiting on this dude to come try and, you know, bring me a move or come say something to me about the phone. And, you know, my two little, you know, henchmen that, you know, gravitated towards me, you know, they telling me what was going on while I was on the phone, that everybody was looking at dude like he was soft because... You know, I got on his phone without asking and made him wait, you know, and how he went and put his sneakers on and everybody's watching to see what's going to happen. I said, man, I'm not really worrying about that dude, you know. So now, here comes this other dude, you know. A guy comes in the unit and he's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he had like a, he had a size 13 foot. He got on a pair of those new, the, 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 the first pair of Air Jordans uh, that came out, the red, white, and blue ones. Y'all know them, the little flat sole ones they came out with, but they was nice. Me and all my two henchmen, we couldn't fit them, but, you know, they was already telling me that them dudes on that side, they'd be robbing dudes for their sneakers when they come in. So they was plotting on dudes. So they wanted to wait till after 12 o'clock, you know, count when the police is gone for the night to go move on a dude. So at about 11, 11.30, um, I get up, I take my two henchmen, you know, we go in the bathroom behind dude when he in the bathroom and we throw a blanket over his head. We gave him what we call a blanket party. We threw the blanket over his head and we just went to whooping this dude, knocked him down, snatched his sneakers off his feet and beat him with his own size 13 sneakers and took his sneakers and, you know, we went back over there and laid down. Now, the lieutenant, well, the sergeant, it was a sergeant. The sergeant come up there and dude is standing up by the bars and he ain't got on no sneakers. So the sergeant calls him out the joint because he had a legal visit. He goes see his lawyer. When he goes see his lawyer, um, he goes down there his socks. So his lawyer asks what happened and, you know, the sergeant asks what happened and he tell him somebody threw a blanket over his head, jumped him and took the sneakers. So they asked him who took him. You know, he don't know who took him because there was a blanket over his head is what he told him. So now he comes back up and he tells the couple of, you know, lame dudes that he hang with that, yeah, the sergeant going to get my sneakers back. They're going to find out who got my sneakers. You know, there was no cameras in this jail, so it had to be somebody to tell. So the dudes told him that it was me, you know, and I got the sneakers under the bed. You know, and I got them in a little plastic bag on the bed, and I'm waiting on somebody coming in size 13 so I can sell them, you know. And, yeah, I was getting paid in money, but I just like the violence, and I just like to take things from dudes, you know. But um, I wouldn't have really took them, but they said that these dudes was going to take them, so I wanted to take them from them first, and I'm trying to jigger these dudes. So now when he come back up and I find out that he went to the police, I told him straight up, I said, dude, you know, you got to shake the gate. That's another terminology. Shake the gate means you got to leave the door and go to the gate, grab it with your bar, with your hand, the bars, and shake it and tell the police come get me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you can't live in here no more being that you tell them. So police come up, he shakes the gate, and he leaves. You know? Later on, I'm chilling. I'm in there, and I'm watching TV, and, you know, I, I decide to... You know, yeah, it's child time. So when they call child time and we all walk up there and we stand up and we waiting on child, me and my three little homies is there. We like seventh in line and, you know, but the food ain't going to be there for another 20 minutes. But the police said, get ready for child. So we all up there chilling. And then now here comes the food cart. Food cart comes and when the food cart comes and they say child time, here come these five dudes. They come and they walk right up to the front of the line. If you youngins want to go to prison to have to live like this, feel free to do it. But I'm telling you, it, it wasn't worth it. So here come dude. They walks up to the front of the line. And just when 
they're about to push the first tray and they go to reach for the tray. So I move the other dudes out the way. I go up to the front and I take the first tray and I call my two homies and hand them a tray. So now we got our three trays and we go sit down. So now the whole dome is like, ooh, you know what I mean? Like, damn, what's, what's going to happen here? We're going to have some action tonight. You know, I like action. So I take the tray, we sit down, we eat in the tray, and the little homies, they already knew everybody in the block. I don't know nobody yet. I'm just getting in there. So they move around the unit, they find out what's going on, they come back, and they say, dudes, it's mad that I roughed the phone off, that I took the dude's sneakers, and that I took the tray. I'm not worried about none of that. You know what I mean? So I tell him, all right, what it is, what it is. He said, all right, but they're going to try and make a move on us. You know what I mean? Now, they're using the us word. They ain't say they make a move on you, so they let me know they're down. And I said, all right. So later on, you know, after child, you know, when you get your child, you don't really eat everything, and, you you know, you buy certain things from other dudes, or you take things from other dudes' tray, and you wrap it up in a plastic and, you know, you put it up, and later on at night when you're ready to eat, we had a big water, you know. It was a big thing of hot water, uh, a hot water pot. And it had one of those lids on the top that you pick up the little black knob, you pick it up, you look in it, you see the water boiling, and you hit the little knob, and the water come out, you know. So at night, they take the lid, and they put it upside down, and the sandwiches that we save, say it's bologna or hamburger or whatever, you put it in that lid, and you put the lid on top of the thing, and that made what we call a microwave. So I decide I'm hungry. So I go up there and I go, check the microwave, you know. There was something in the microwave, you know. Somebody had a couple of sandwiches in there, but I'm hungry. So what I do is I take out their sandwiches and I politely put it on the table, and I put my joints in the joint, you know. So I go back and I sit down and, you know, my man is telling me, yo, you know, that was one of them dudes, you know, food you took out the microwave. Now, that's the biggest violation you could do in prison is put your hands on somebody's food or reach over someone's food. Ultimate disrespect. So I done violated and took the boy food out. So I already know what it is, but I'm trying to fight one of these dudes to, you know, you know, to, to cut in and let them know that it's a new king in the block. So... After I get my sandwich, I go eat. My man finds out. He come back telling me they heat it. I'm not really tripping on none of that. So, he dude goes in the thing and he puts his sandwich in the microwave and he yells out, who put their hands on my food? Who touched my food? I know I'm you coward mother. Who, 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 who ain't touch my food? And do, 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 do. And he's doing all this barking. And everybody is so quiet. You can hear uh, a rat or an ant pissing on cotton. You know what I mean? And it, it, it was just so crazy. So I stand up and I said, yo, I took that out of there, homie, my bad. And he said, why you put your hands on my food? I said, hold on, I can't hear you because I'm in the back by the TV and, you know, the microwave is up front by, you know, the police station and all that. Uh, I walk up to the front, and I said, what you say? He said, why'd you put your hands on my food? So I just punched him dead in his face. Boop, 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 and we get to fight. You know, so we we, 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 we tearing that joint up. I mean, we, we fighting hard. So everybody's standing around. They're watching this fight, you know. He, he can fight. I'm not going to take that from him, you know. He got a couple of good licks in. I got a couple of good licks in. But it was a damn good fight. I felt like I won. And he felt like he won or he did good, you know. But everybody was telling him, like, nah, you know, that new dude unique, he put it on you. You know what I mean? This is what they telling him. So when they tell him that he's putting it on, that I put it on him, now nah, he mad and, you know, I guess he wants another round, <laughs> you know. I'm not even thinking about this dude, but, you know, I'm ready to whoop him again, right? So... He goes, he puts his shoes on, he go talk to his homies and all that. And then they bring this dude up in the unit that I'm cool with, you know, from the street. But he's not an aggressive dude. But they bring him up and he moves on their side with them because he grew up with them and, you know, I'm a whole out of town. So he goes over there and he's sitting down with them and 
he's coming over there, he's talking to us, and you know what I mean? And he's basically telling me that dudes is in their feelings, this and that. And, you know, I'm basically telling, man, I wipe my ass with a dude's feelings. I don't care about his feelings. If it's something I did he don't like, tell him to bring it, <laughs> you know? So he goes back over there, and he don't tell him nothing. But he come back, and he said, yo, they plotting on you, they plotting on you. I said, all right, well, don't get involved in it because you living over there with them, and you got to stay down here. But I'm about to tear this joint up, you know? So dude turns around. And later on that night, I go take a shower. And I get out the shower. When I get out the shower, they used to give us like an army jacket to wear, you know, and, you know, army pants and an army shirt. So when you go see your lawyer or you go to chow, you put on this outfit to walk out there for wherever you want to go. They even had something called the ombudsman. An uh, ombudsman is a terminology they use that means the counselor. So when you go see the ombudsman, you got to wear that, and that's how you get your free phone call. If you can't reach somebody, they got a block on the phone or whatever. So I go see the ombudsman, and the ombudsman tells me, yo, I heard I got a lot of complaints about you already. And I said, man, ain't no complaints about me. I'm, I'm by myself. I don't know none of these dudes. And maybe that's why they're complaining, because it's more of them. And he's like, nah, I, I can see in your eyes that, you know, you're a troublemaker. I said, no, I'm not no troublemaker, man. He said, well, them dudes are troublemakers, too, so I don't really like them anyway. None of us like them because they've been taking dude's sneakers up there, and I heard you took the dude's sneakers the night before, this and that. So, of course, me, I said, man, I ain't take nobody nothing. He said, yeah, and he just smirked at me and laughed. He said, all right, well, carry on, warrior. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess he figured I'm going to go up there and get whooped out because they tell them all these stories about what they're going to do. So we shoot up there, right, and they take me back up to the dorm. So when we go back to the dorm, I go take my shower, and, you know, when... I get out the shower, they're telling me that dudes is going to make a move on us, you know? So what I do is I go get, I think I got something I can show you. I go get a roll of toilet paper, a toothbrush, and they used to give out these little cheap pink uh, orange big razors. So I take the toilet paper and I roll up a piece of joint, you know? I roll a piece of toilet paper. I made what we call a wick. I mean, I'm going to give you all the, you know, you know, I like to get a demonstration. This is a wick. So I rolled up a wick, you know, and then I take a battery and I take a razor and I chip a little corner of the battery here and in the, in the, what they call that, the, what's my call it, pack, you know, um, Newport box of Marlboro's Camels. They got the little, you know, aluminum foil thing in it that's real thin, but it has aluminum foil on one side and paper on the other. So we cut these little tiny little strips. So we get the strips, you put one on the top and where you cut the battery on the side, you know, you take the strip and you touch it on the side and that little piece of paper, when that metal hit, it go and it blows and it lights. So you put that on your mouth like this and you bring the thing over there and you take it and, bang, and it flames up and turns into a fire. So that's what's going on. So I go in there and I make my little, take the toilet paper, it's called a donut, and I pull out the inside and make it real fluffy like soda burn. So I take that in the bathroom, right? And when I take it in the bathroom, I bring the toothbrush, and I told my two little henchmen to hold me down. So I go in there, and I take five of the razors, I bust them down with some toenail clippers, and I get the blade out. When I get the blade out, I put all five of them together. I hold the toothbrush, the end of it, you know, the end of the toothbrush over the fire, and when I held it over the fire, uh, I melted it. So when I melted it, I got a wet rag, and I take the five razors, and I push it in the plastic, and I take the the the... the the wax that melted from the, the plastic that melted from the toothbrush and I'm shaping it on it to hold that blade in, you know, when it cools off and I dip it in some cold water so it frees up, you know. So then now I take the I take the joint. Now I should have bought the props, but this is just off the head. So I take the, the, the toothbrush and I hold it over the fire a little past the middle so that it could get warm so I could bend the plastic over so I could fit my hand in it to hold it like this and have the blade in my hand. Because now, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, everything is even being that it's five of them and only, you know, one of me. You know, three with these two dudes if they really going to go. But I got to make sure I can handle me because I know I'm going to go. So later on that night, I go in the shower. I got my little, you know, homemade shank with me and I come out the shower and, you know, they telling me, yo, dude, plotting, dude, plotting. So I already know what he plotting. 
Everybody always used to talk about, oh, if they got mad, even the biggest cow, oh, I'm going to throw that hot water on you. I mean, they argued over a spade game because they lost a hand or they feel somebody cheated or misbid or whatever, and they threatened to throw hot water on each other. They said, already let me know what their weapon of choice is. So when they did that with their weapon of choice, I said, okay. So I go get the army jacket, put on like three army shirts, and I put on like three army pants, and I put my you know, Air Force Ones on, you know, the ones with the strap. I strap them, make sure my ankle is tight so that I can get my grip because I'm ready to go to work. So I lay down on the bed, and while I'm laying on the bed, I tell the two little henchmen, I said, yo, you know, I'm facing, you know, the TV so my back is to them coming up. So dude thinking that I'm sleeping. So I tell my man, when he get to the bed next to mine, just let me know, and I'm going to do the rest from there, you know, and stand back. So now here comes dude walking up the thing, and I'm laying down like I'm asleep, you know, but I'm under these, this blanket. They had these big, thick, itchy wool blankets. I'm under the blanket. They, they were so itchy, you had to wear your, 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 your army uniform with it, <laughs> you know what I mean? When you lay down, you see the itchy skin. You know, it's real nasty. I can't believe they even gave that to us. But anyway, so I'm laying down with this itchy blanket over this uh, army fatigue jacket and three army shirts and, you know, three army pants, my Air Force Ones wrapped up. So dude think that, you know, I don't lay down to go to bed because dudes go in their underwears and lay down and go to bed like that. So I'm laying down and I tell him, let me know when he's getting close. He said, yo, he's coming, he's coming. You know, so he's watching TV and he's like, yo, he's coming, he's coming. You know, I said, oh, just let me know when he get to that bed. Let me know when he get to the bed. So as soon as he gets to the bed, I jump up with this blanket. I say, it's a big, thick, itchy, boom, you know, like an army blanket. But it's, we, we, we label it a prison blanket. So as soon as he gets there, he said, yo, he's dead. I jumps up and I take the blanket that was over me, throws it over him and the hot water. And, you know, it was a big pot, big, 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 big pot. You know what I mean? And why? So he's carrying it by the handles because the pot is hot. So he's trying to balance it without letting it burn his chest or the water spill on him. So I already know what time it is. So when I throws the blanket over him, I take my right hand, I throws it between his legs, take my left hand, I throws it over his shoulder. And when he tried to back up, when he saw me throwing the blanket, you know, he dropped the hot pot. So the hot pot drops and I grabs him with the blanket and I slams him on his neck and started kicking him. And we... We, 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 we fighting. So he jumps up off the ground when he feels that hot water on his ass. So he starts swinging and we going at it and, you know, I'm fighting him. And I mean, we, we, we rocking and rolling. And I'm not going to take nothing from him. He was a good fighter, you know. So we fighting and we fighting hard. So it's like boom, 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 boom. And everybody's screaming now. And they got another dorm across the hall from our dorm because we upstairs. And everybody's on the bars looking. So from that, the police hears the noise because downstairs they got two more units. And, you know, right under my unit was one and under the unit across from us that they got uh, the other end of the bars. They did. See how immaculate my memory is? You know, so a fake dude that never been through nothing would say I was capping. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm telling you facts. Now, check. So everybody's screaming. So while they're screaming and carrying on, the police come running up there. When the police come running up there, they say, what happened? What happened? You know what I mean? And, you know, we had separated from the fight, so they couldn't tell what happened. And that's where all hell broke loose. Gunshots to the rat bastards. Everybody pointed the finger at me and said that was him. He was fighting. You know what I mean? He's a bully. We don't want him in here, they said. They don't want me, little old me. What did I do? They said, we don't want him in here, you know? So I guess they was comfortable with these five dudes taking advantage of them and being that I was new, they wasn't comfortable with that. So they all pointed the finger at me. And then here comes this lieutenant. But I know the lieutenant from the street because his, uh, his brother, a family member, used to cop from one of my spots. So he come up there and lieutenant said, man, come on, what's going on? You know what I mean? And then here comes, uh, I mean, sergeant. Here come another white sergeant. So another sergeant come up now. It's a white one because it was a black one at first. And he asked what happened. And, you know, I said, man, I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? He said, yeah, well, these dudes said this and that. And I said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. So they said, all right, come on. You know what I mean? You go into the hole. The hole was a, was a cell the size of a card table. You know, you know, you know those tables that you put your food on that fold up in half 
You see how thin it is? You can put your back on the wall and touch the bars is how small that joint was. No mattress, no bed, no nothing. Just a little hole in the middle of the floor that you're supposed to urinate and, you know, defecate in, you know, and then you got to sleep on the floor. Now I'm going to tell you how nasty this was. This is how they treated me, a human being. They got me laying in the floor. That other dudes was in the hole that done defecated and urinated, missed a hole and a whole nine, cause the hole, you know, it went down. So when you pee it, it goes down into the hole. But, you know, people don't go too close to the hole because it's stinking. You don't want to hold your joint over this hole. So they're pissed all over the floor. And once in a while, they'll come in and they'll bring like a, a mop bucket of hot water with some lye and bleach. And they'll just throw it on the floor and scrub the floor, you know, and push it down in that hole. You know, try, you know, uh, retain the smell, you know, but it was still nasty. So now you got urine, feces, vomit, blood, you know, and now you got bleach and lye, you know, all in this hole. And you got lay in this little tiny room and no matter which way you turn, you smell it. So you go to the bars normally, what I did. I went to the bars and I'm breathing outside the bars, <sighs> you know, and I'm just trying to breathe out. And I had to do that for seven days because I didn't want to inhale that because the bleach was strong, the urine was strong, the feces was strong, the lye was strong, the vomit was strong, and the blood was, oh, my God. It was, oh. But anyway, so I'm sitting in there, and while I'm sitting there, it gets so crazy. They kept me down there for seven days. So after seven days, they come and they take me out, and they said, uh, you know, we're going to put you over here in this other dorm, you know. So they put me in the dorm downstairs. Now, when they put me in the dorm, nah, 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 I mixed it up. I mixed it up. Like I said, I'm out my head. What happened is, right, I hold that one. I put the horse before the cart about the shoe. This is how I wound up in the shoe. That night when they went to take us down, they said they was going to put me in the shoe. And the two little henchmen that was with me, they said, uh, they said, well, if he going to the hole, I'm going to the hole. That's what the first one said, the light-skinned brother. You know, so they said, "Ah, right, well, you going to the hole too?" So then here comes little Godzuki. He said, "Well, I'm going too." You know what I mean? So we figured that they only got three of these nasty little cells. They can't put us all, you know, there because there's always somebody in there, even if it's for a night to scare them or whatever. So instead, they move us downstairs. You know what I mean? They put us downstairs in another dorm. So. This before I get to the hole. This is how I wound up getting to the hole. So I'm down there, and remember the dude I told you that was coming in, uh, and he was sitting there and telling us what was going on, but I'm cool with him from the street, but these is homies he grew up with, but he ain't really like that with him, but he respect them because they're supposed to be the gangsters of the prison. So while we're sitting there, right, that next morning they called Chow. So here comes dude that was coming over there giving us the information you know, walking down with no shoes on with his socks, you know. So I said, yo, what happened? He said, man, somebody stole my sneakers last night when I went to sleep. It's 6 in the morning. We was up there fighting till 3, 4 in the morning, you know. So I'm like, you know, you know who took your sneakers, man. You know what I mean? He just put his head down and he walked out because he ain't want to do nothing about it. So he just left it at someone took his sneakers. But I'm in my body right now and I'm still vexed with this dude. You know what I mean? For this hot water, because this is what happened. When I slammed him on the floor, you know, and he dropped the pot of hot water, the water splashed up and went. I don't even want to show you my feet, because my feet is so bad right now. Well, you know, the water splashed up and it went in my in my shoe down my ankle. And when I take the air, when I took the Air Force One off, I had these big thick pus balls all over my ankle, and now I can't put no shoe on. You know, so I'm a little handicapped. I mean, it, the, the, the bubbles was like this thick. And when you touch it, it was like mushy. You could feel like like thick water in it. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because I had to wind up taking a pin eventually, you know, put a little fire on the pin and, you know, to sterilize it. And then, you know, put a hole in it to squeeze the pus out. And for me doing that, left a nasty, you know, mark uh, um, on my left ankle. Still have it to this day, you know. So I'm in my feelings behind him mocking me like this. And they moved me from upstairs to downstairs so I can't get with this dude. I mean, I'm thoroughly in my feelings. And now they done took the little homie sneakers that they know not cut like that and he wanted his. 
So the dude come walking downstairs. They don't know I'm downstairs. They think they took me to the hole because that's where they threatened to take me when my two little homies, my henchmen, said, nah, if he go, I go. So everybody always come and look in the dorms downstairs when they walk by to see who up, who they know, say what's up, ask for, you know, little snicker, zoom, zoom, wham, wham. That's what we call the munchies, you know. And, you know, I'm standing there, and here come dude. He sticks his head in to look in to see who's there. I stick my left hand out the bars, turn it this way, and grab him by his face and slams it on the bars, and I'm holding him. I'm holding him on the bars right now. And I got my razor in the other hand, but I can't cut him on his face like I want to. You know what I mean? So he got away with the, with the buck fit. Because if I would have cut him, if I would have tried to hit his face, my hand, let me show you so you can see it. My hand is over the jaw. I would have cut my hand. So I couldn't get it. But I just held his face there, and he's pulling to get off. And I got his face pinned against the bars. And I just take the race, and I start chopping him all on his back. I'm chopping him up, chopping him up, chopping him up on his back. And he's fighting to get away. So the police come, and they take, you know, the baton, and they smack me on the wrist. Bang! So when they hit me on the wrist, it drop, and I let this dude go. And there's blood everywhere. There's blood everywhere. You know, so now they come in and the police ain't never seen nothing like this in this little town. So now they grab me and that's when they put me in a hole. You know what I mean? To put this story in order. That's when they put me in a hole and had me laying in my own feces and other people's feces for a week. So after they do that now, they come and they say, OK, you know, a week later, they say, all right, we're going to take you out. But we putting you, you know, in the cell blocks. Because this was in a dorm that this took place. We took it, we putting you in the cell block. We putting you in the cell block. We try to look out for you. We put you in a dorm. And then when you get in trouble, we put you in another dorm. And then now you come and you do that in another dorm. So we putting you in a cell block and they doing all this. And I said, yeah, all right, whatever. The cell block had dudes that was looking at like 45 years to 90 in the state. Because that's how they was giving up time. You know what I mean? 60 to 120 years. These were the big bank robbers, murderers. There was even a dude there that raped a lady like 80 years old, you know? And, you know, old white lady over at the mall. And I knew this dorm was soft because they had him in the, in the unit and they didn't punish him. So when I get in there, the dude tried to gravitate to me and me and him was cool, you know what I mean? Before I found out that he had a rape charge. But, you know... I've been on here long enough, man. I gotta leave y'all in suspense, man, because y'all ain't ready for this, man. Too long, 30 minutes. Yo, make sure y'all subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Huh? And make sure you go to roco.com and check out my videos and go to my podcast. They both are Unique Mecha Audio, man. And subscribe and follow me at Unique Mecha Audio at Instagram. I... Cheers, 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 the crime, cheers, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. Hey! Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix, yeah. what he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this, Real. take a little gully posse and put it in haul, uh -huh. he cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom, back. drop the book, you should go and get it, an Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit, yeah. then you could consider yourself linked in, Real. sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, uh -huh. how he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, uh -huh. did not pay attention would be stupid, talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Live like two G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. 
I let shorty go, she was whining. Whine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Run. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. Oh. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can get back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.